father has made a decision a decision that we should not be destroyed friends as we worship the lord let's remember we are here today in the presence of our god only because the son chose to give himself up as a selfless sacrifice jesus gave himself up for us to rescue us from all darkness and bring us to his light let us never stop standing in wonder of the blood of the lord jesus hebrews 12 verse 24 says christ is the mediator of a new covenant and his blood speaks a better word than the blood of abel instead of crying out for vengeance for retribution for revenge the blood of christ cries out forgiveness healing restoration mercy forgiveness thank you jesus your blood is healing every wound your blood is making all things new your blood speaks a better word your blood the measure of my worth your blood more than i deserve your blood speaks a better word speaks a better word it's singing out with life it's shouting down the lines it echoes through the night the precious blood of christ speaks a better word speaks a better word your blood the robe of righteousness your blood my hope and my defense your blood forever covers me forever covers me oh, oh it's singing out with life it shall down the lines it echoes through the night the precious blood of Christ speaks a better word speaks a better word it's calling out my name it's breaking every chain it's making all things right the precious blood of Christ speaks a better word speaks a better word yes jesus thank you for your blood that speaks forgiveness and healing mercy and restoration upon us oh god thank you thank you thank you lord for the precious blood that you shed for us on calvary thank you for your cross oh god yes lord 
It's rewriting my history It covers me with destiny It's making all things right The precious blood of Christ It's rewriting my history It covers me with destiny Yes, Lord, from darkness to light it's making all things right The precious blood of Christ It's rewriting my history It covers me with destiny It making all things right The precious blood of Christ It's singing out with life it's shouting down the lies It echoes through the night The precious blood of Christ Speaks a better word Speaks a better word It's calling out my name It's breaking every chain it's making all things right The precious blood of Christ Speaks a better word Speaks a better word Oh, 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 oh It's making all things right The precious blood of Christ a better word speaks a better word and oh, 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 oh it's making all things right the precious blood of Christ speaks a better word speaks a better word Yes, Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your blood, for your forgiveness, for your grace and your mercy. Forever, Lord, forever, Lord, we stand in wonder at your mercy, at your forgiveness. Forever, O oh Lord, we stand in wonder, in awe of what you have accomplished upon the cross, Lord, at what you have accomplished upon the cross for us. Thank you, Jesus. As we contemplate on your word, your promise to the good thief, today you shall be with me in paradise. Give us the grace to turn to you and find our hope in you, O oh Lord. All the agony of the cross that you bore has meaning for my repentance, for my eternal salvation. Have mercy on me, Lord. And give me the grace to turn to you in prayer. Remember me when you are in your kingdom. Let me have the delight in the midst of all the misery of my sinfulness. The delight of hearing your whisper. Today you shall be with me in paradise. Holy Spirit, let me be able to hear the voice of my Jesus promising a new future, giving a fresh hope for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. 
Let me read for you from the gospel according to Luke chapter 23 verses 39 to 43. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly. For the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the gospel, the good news. Even the worst of the criminals could find mercy from the broken heart of Jesus. Because he offered his heart to be broken, his body to be wounded. That you and I, in the most miserable moments of our sin, could find forgiveness and hope in him. Two criminals were crucified with Jesus. Jesus in the middle. And this was purposely done because the Jewish leadership and the Roman government wanted the death of Jesus to go down in history as the most shameful death of a criminal. The calculation was that the memory of Jesus will be erased from the minds of everyone. The memory of Jesus will never be honored again. A man condemned and crucified the most shameful, the most atrocious, the most painful way of ending one's life. You know, my dear friends, it was in the midst of this agony and shame that this criminal who we call the good thief, receives forgiveness, pardon, and paradise. Two criminals, the criminal on the right and on the left, both were equally criminals. And the one on the right Traditionally, we call him Saint Dismas, calling him a saint. The other criminal on the left, the criminal on the left was reviling Jesus, blaspheming, and shouting out abuses. In fact, that's how the death on the cross happened 
always. The torture was so terrible. The pain was so unbearable. They would shout at everyone. The only organ they could move was the tongue. Every other organ of the body would be fixed with nails. And the blasphemy and the abuses would be so terrible that often the tongue of the crucified person would be cut off. But the criminal we call the good thief on the right is then dismissed. He turns to Jesus. Remember me when you are in your kingdom. And the promise given to him today, you shall be with me in paradise. There's something very significant all through the passion of Jesus. This was the first person that Jesus spoke to. A lot of people shouted at Jesus, reviled him. And conspicuously in the narrative of the passion, it is written, Jesus was silent. Jesus was silent. He was arrested and taken to the palace of Caiaphas. Caiaphas questioned him. The false witnesses shouting atrocities at him. And later taken to Pilate, the Roman governor. The Pilate asked him many questions. Again, false witnesses shouting and screaming. Pilate comes to know that Jesus was a Galilean coming from Galilee. So Pilate wanted to escape the judgment. He sent Jesus to Herod, the king of Galilee. Herod was in Jerusalem on that day. And Jesus did not say a word to Herod. Conspicuously, Jesus was silent. Of course, two times when a direct question was asked to Jesus by authority who Jesus was. First, Caiaphas, the high priest, then Pilate, the Roman governor. Jesus did say in very few words who he was. To Pilate, Jesus said, you say I am the king, that's what I am born for. And Caiaphas asking him, are you the Christ? Jesus said, yes. You say that. I am the Christ. You will see me coming in glory. Otherwise, Jesus was always silent. He did not defend himself. He did not retort anyone. He did not try to vindicate himself. He was silent. The first time Jesus opened his heart was to this criminal. Today, you shall be with me in paradise. You know, my dear friends, there is Something very important here. Jesus was not defending himself. Not vindicating himself. Not proving his innocence. Not bringing any witness to say that he was innocent. It happened years ago. 
a few good Christians wanted to make a film on Jesus Christ. They wanted it to be the most magnificent film ever made in India on the life of Jesus. They contacted the most famous South Indian star to play the character of Jesus. And this star accepted the offer on condition that he should agree with the script. The script was very carefully written and explained to this star. And all through the narration of the script, the star was very pleased. At the end of it, this South Indian star suggested a minor change. A little addition of a few moments in the script. He said, it is glorious to be born in a manger when the angels come down singing. It is magnificent to walk on the waves of the sea in the midst of a storm. It is wonderful to call out the name of the dead man and the dead man coming out alive. It's great to feed 5,000 with merely five loaves of bread and two fish. All great it is even heroic to be flogged at the pillar. And it is really heroic to die on the cross in the midst of thunder and lightning and earthquake. Great film. I'm impressed. I will play the role of Jesus. I will play it as best as I can with a minor change. A little addition. And the script writers asked him, what is that addition? The addition is this. On the cross, when Christ is nailed and crying aloud, all great, heroic, the people standing down shout out, if you are the son of God, come down. The criminal on the left taunting him, you are the Messiah, save yourself and us. The chief priests and the crowds all shouting humiliations. At that moment, Christ, the hero on the cross, as a hero dying on the cross, I will wrestle my arms and twist my hand with my muscle power and the nails should fly away. I will come down and stun scene punch that chief priest, punch that criminal, hit everyone challenging me. It's my prestige. When I'm challenged, I'm humiliated, I need to vindicate myself. Son of God must vindicate himself. And then I will go up to the cross and die in the midst of earthquake and thunder and lightning, heroic. Well, the script writers did not agree to that script, to the change. And the film was never made. But that's human thinking. When people misunderstand me and taunt me and humiliate me publicly, I must vindicate myself. That is justice. Justice was not done 
to Jesus, was it? He was not vindicated either in the palace of the high priest or in the court of Pilate. He was condemned unjustly and to die in public shame. That's how he died. And Jesus did not add it in the script of his life that he would be vindicated. His innocence will be proved now. You know, my dear friends, it's good for us to understand. There are people who say, why should I bear all this humiliation? I am falsely accused. I am publicly ashamed and blamed. I need to vindicate myself. All of us have this experience. And we challenge even God, oh God, if I'm innocent, why do you not vindicate me? Why well, is not an angel coming down, causing an earthquake and punishing the criminals? The unjust people are winning, having victory. They are honored in public. Jesus did not add it to the script of his life. Jesus may not add it to the script of my life, your life. That is in the plan of God. You and I know, I can confess this to you. There were times I was misunderstood most miserably. Even the best of my intentions were misrepresented. To this day, I'm not vindicated in the eyes of others. They might look at me as a criminal or someone who did something very wrong. But I should not expect it from Jesus. I should not. Because in the script of his life, vindication on this earth of his good name was not there. And therefore, I shall be ready. You and I shall be ready to be humiliated, to be misunderstood, to be shouted at, to be reviled at, the worst things to be spoken against us and our salvation is in the crucified Lord. There are people who say, I suffer a lot. Why am I suffering a lot? Our only salvation is turning to Jesus. Remember me when you are in the kingdom. There are many, there could be many secrets between me and my Jesus. It's enough that my Jesus promises me. My Jesus understands me. I should not waste my energy and my time defending myself. It's enough. My Jesus tells me, you shall be with me today in paradise. When there are sufferings in our life, we need to turn to Jesus. The moments of suffering, the moments of misunderstanding, the moments of problems are moments when I must be with my Jesus in a personal relationship. As Jesus said to the Father, Father, forgive them. Everyone. They are not responsible. This cross is between you and me. There are moments we should be able to say that. 
बिकॉज आ लीडर अ गॉड लोड एंड सेवियर इज चीसस द क्रूसिफाइड वन एंड इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट वेयर वी प्लेस वेर आई प्लेस माई क्रॉस इट्स नॉट इनफ दर आई एम मिस अंडरस्टूड It's not enough that I suffer in my body. It's not enough that my good name is spoiled. In such moments, we will be upset. We will be broken. We will complain. But my suffering will become meaningful, depending on where I am crucified. am i crucified on the right or am i crucified on the left what does it mean to be crucified on the left like the criminal on the left the criminal on the left reviling blaspheming shouting and screaming dying a desperate cruel death the death of the criminal on the right was also cruel was also painful and yet the cross of jesus and the cross of the criminal on the right saint dismiss these two crosses bathe in the glory and the cross on the left remains a curse to be misunderstood is a curse to have cancer is a curse to suffer pain in the body is a curse that curse that pain becomes glorious when it is united with the cross of jesus only the cross of jesus only the broken body of jesus was glorified i will be glorified with jesus when i suffer with him the great words of saint paul if i suffer with him i will be glorified with him every moment of suffering every moment of being misunderstood every moment of being humiliated every moment when anything goes wrong with my life i must turn to jesus remember me i could be sinful i could be a bad person my guilt could haunt me and yet i must turn to my jesus remember me when you are in the kingdom and we will get the promise today today the word today always goes with salvation the angel said to the shepherds today a savior is born for you in the city of david today to jesus said today salvation is come to this house to sakes of jericho today if you hear his voice do not harden your heart today today always goes with salvation and jesus said to the good thief today you shall be with me in paradise there will be no delay if i turn to jesus if i turn to him in the moments of my sin the moments of my misery the moments of my pain remember me today you shall be with me in paradise salvation heavenly comfort is never denied every pain of ours every sickness every mental distress every torture must be handed over to jesus with the wounds of jesus to be raised up to the heavenly father for the glory of heaven to descend and glory will descend 
something beautiful in the promise of Jesus to the good thief. Today, you shall be with me in paradise. What the good thief asked for, remember me when you are in, the, in your kingdom. What Jesus promised was much more than the good thief asked for. The good thief was given entry into the kingdom, not only to the kingdom, but into the paradise. Why paradise? The meaning of that word is paradise, walled garden. In the king's palace, connected to the king's palace, there will be a walled garden, a private garden, well decorated, well maintained, well watered. That's where the king goes for his relaxation, for his stroll. That's where the king takes honored guests. That everybody may know, everybody in the kingdom may know, this person is my companion, is my honored guest. With him, the king goes for a stroll. Paradise means cordiality, companionship, honor. The good thief asked for entry into the kingdom. And Jesus promises entry into paradise, offering him companionship and cordiality and honor in the presence of the Lord. And that's a great promise today. Whatever has gone wrong with our life, it is never too late to enter into paradise. The good thief was promised not only immortality, but paradise. But the Lord is waiting to promise to you and to me. Whatever we are suffering. Whatever has gone wrong with our life. Whatever we are despised and humiliated about. Our glory is the paradise offered by the crucified Lord. We don't look to be vindicated here. We don't look to be publicly defended here. What we hope for? Paradise. Companionship with the Lord. God, your word, the way you opened your heart to the good, good thief gives me great courage and hope. Often I complain there's no justice in the world. Often I crib, where is God? I can hear this shout everywhere. If God is there, why doesn't he come down to defend his people? Lord, I learn from your word, from the cross, that I have hope. I should not be looking to be understood, to be respected, to be cared for during my public life on this earth. But my honor, my glory is your paradise that you offer me today. Amen. I am Minisha Pereira, come from Goa, to tell you all what Christ has done in my life. It's, this story starts way before when I was doing my master's. I was a person, as we call as Sunday Catholics or Saturday Catholics, whatever we define it as. For me, mass was just a compulsion. It was just because everybody is going, I would go. And rosary was something that I would just wait to miss because I was staying in the hostel. I would give every week the reason why I should not attend the rosary. 
and this was my normal lifestyle but still be going through some of the problems related to health being with my friends doing things excelling in studies i was a volleyball player busy and exerting myself too much this was just the definition of my life but i didn't know who jesus was and what is his significance in my life until one day what happens is because of all the stressful activities i had developed a baker cyst which is uh, behind my knee and if it is not taken care in time in this cyst the fluid get accumulated so since i had not taken care and i was just doing all the vigorous activities this bursted as a result of which all the fluid from my knee went down my leg in the different tissues to that extent that my leg was really swollen forget about walking i was not able to take even a step in front and this was when i was in my last semester which was the very crucial one and for some time suddenly everything was shattered but still as i believe now god never leaves his dear ones whether we care or we love him or not he is always there hidingly caring for us i was so blessed with my friends who took care because i was far away from home this was in manglo and my college supported me a lot they would drop me even exams i gave and by grace of god i got a uh, distinction in my masters and excel in fact way better than what i would do before but this was not it like i never knew like what was happening i thought this was just that's it things my leg was also i was limping and i never thought i would be able to walk properly because the pain was very bad everyone was like working out on the job thing and for me it was just the leg and i thought maybe this is my life now i don't think i will be you know fine just then one strange thing that was happening was i would see divine retreat center everywhere someone would advise me why don't you attend a youth retreat or somebody would give me a book from divine or divine voice and this was something that was happening in the background which i really didn't know but one day because of this pain i had to take lot of steroids especially i had to inject my knee so that the swelling goes down because it was not going down and i was taking the advice from the one of the best doctors in mumbai but and every weekly when i was injecting one day my eye went on the crucifix and it i'll tell you it is not easy to inject your own self because you are like you know you're so terrified because whether it will pain or it will not because you have to prick yourself so and when my eye went on the crucifix my only thought was imagine i'm just scared of a prick but how much suffering did the christ take for us this was the first time i remembered christ and with this suddenly from nowhere one of my friends she comes and she tells me you are coming for a retreat i'm like no ways i am not attending any retreat she's like i'm not asking you i'm telling you because i've already booked your tickets and i was like i didn't know what to do because her mother was also coming and i didn't want to offend her and at the same time i got a interview uh, call so i thought like you know now this is a very good reason so that i can escape this so i told her i have a interview to attend so i cannot come with you i should say today it was my good luck that the interview got postponed and i had no choice but to go to divine and i went came to divine first i had the thoughts like six days how will i be able to survive in a retreat center without the phone and everything like that but my presence here i it was really a magical all the teachings it was so different and the best thing was that happened to me was during the healing session the eucharistic adoration when this was going on and i remember the preacher preaching and the word that came matthew 11:28 come all who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest when this word came i felt jesus was just asking me so the only thing that came in my mind was jesus can you heal me and when this happened within i will not even say a minute 
the one the preacher just says that you know someone has been touched and that minute i felt one shock that has just gone down my leg and it was something very funny because i've never experienced such a thing in my life and i happened to tell this to my friend but as usual ego i'm a science student i didn't believe she said you have to you know accept it you know you have to testify it i said how will i testify when i have not seen any medical reports it can be any you know anything that can happen so then i came back i've seen that i went back to bombay and i did all my test and to that extent my doctor himself was surprised and it's one of the well reputed uh, hospitals so it was like my the report after the retreat and before retreat were two different reports praise the lord and it was yeah and it was like just you know it was just shocking even for me and soon after two days the the interview which was postponed was held and i even got that post so as if everything was just aligned for me and one thing i would like to say is as i said i was never a prayer person but yet god chose me now rosary is something that i never start my day without saying a rosary and eucharistic celebration is something that i really enjoy and this was a transformation that christ got into my life the thing is when christ touches you nothing remains normal it's always above and the most important thing that i want to stress is i was never in love with christ but christ was always there for me he stood by me even when i was not thinking about him so it is like you know even today i feel i'm so messed up i'm so confused but you know one thing i'm assured is he is always there and he is just waiting and he was he is just waiting for us to call out his name his holy name of jesus amen friends in galatians 4 verse 6 the bible affirms that we are children of god and because we are his children to show us that we are his children god has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts what an amazing blessing to praise god for the spirit of his beloved son is in us this is the spirit which cries out abba father and as his children the bible affirms that we are no longer slaves but we have the status of children of god and god will give us all that he has in store for his children amen you unravel me with the melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God From my mother's womb you have chosen me Love has called my name I've been born again into your family Your blood flows through my veins Sing it out my friends I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child 
child of God. Declare it, my friends. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you for releasing grace upon us that we can be called children of God. Sing it out, my friends. Prophesy over yourself. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I believe, I believe you are inside me. You, are inside me. you, forgive, me. you forgive me. You tolerate me. You, tolerate me. you, are, never me. you are never tired of me. Thank you, my Lord Jesus. There is no one like you. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my life to you. Abba Father. Abba Father. My Heavenly Father. I thank you, I thank you from, the from the bottom of my heart for being my father, for being my, father, for being my, maker. For being my maker. Thank you, Father, thank you, Father for forgiving me. For forgiving me. Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit, I give you my heart, I give you my heart. myself. myself. I, am yours. I am yours. Speak to me. Speak to me. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, where else I will go? Where else I will go? There is no one who can help me. There is no one who can help me. You are my only helper. You are my only helper. The only teacher. The only teacher. The only advocate. The only advocate. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my life to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. And also some of you had weakness on the legs and problem of the joints. You had joint pains and arthritis. 
the lord has already healed some of you from the problem of arthritis praise the lord all those who were suffering from arthritis and joint pains you feel jesus has healed you kindly raise your hands this is the mercy of god and the healing of the lord let's give a mighty clap to the lord the lord also set free many from fear you had a fear of many things fear of people even fear of husband fear of children fear of parents fear of teachers fear of exams different types of fears the lord has already removed these types of fears from your heart praise the lord, praise the lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah somebody who also had the problem of vertigo you were under treatment uh losing the balance god also healed somebody from this problem praise the lord praise hallelujah. hallelujah for a moment please join your hands and pray for me so that the holy spirit may speak through me we seek the intercession of mother mary hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen kindly be seated jesus is the savior when we say jesus is the savior he saves us physically spiritually and emotionally we have body we have mind we have soul when our body falls sick we go to hospital we take medicine when our spirit falls sick we go and we make confession and we receive spiritual healing as we read in sirak chapter 38 verses 9 and 10 my child when you are sick delay not confess your sins and the most high will heal you that does not mean all the sicknesses are caused by sin some were sick because of sinfulness that is why when we make a confession we receive physical healing then we have mind when our mind falls sick we also need healing for our mind that is our emotions a human person has three parts body mind and soul they are interconnected they are so much linked a body cannot live without mind mind cannot sustain without the soul we are all they are all connected that's why so many sicknesses are called as psychosomatic diseases psycho means mind soma means body that means when your mind is sad when your mind is wounded it is natural that your body can also fall sick hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. so now we are going to listen when we speak about jesus the savior we should know he is the savior of our body our mind and our soul he renews our life he makes us as a new person as we read this is in 1 thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 so you can kindly raise your hands and repeat this word of god may the god of peace, god of peace. himself peace. sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ the one who calls you is faithful and he will do this the one who calls you is faithful and he will do this So the Lord Jesus our savior has called you here to this divine retreat center to cleanse your body your mind and your soul so with our confession 
we have already surrendered our soul we have already surrendered our sins our weaknesses and now the lord is going to heal us emotionally praise the lord, praise the lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah and a human heart is composed is created by god alone again it's only god who is the same yesterday today and forever as we read in hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever that means our past is present before jesus christ there is no one who knows our past except jesus more than your father more than your mother more than anyone so the first step to receive this inner healing the emotional healing from jesus is to stop blaming anyone for example if a snake bite you who is to be treated the snake or you there are many people who are who continue to be wounded because they have this habit of accusing others maybe their parents their father their mother their siblings their situations their poverty they keep on accusing for their behavior their wounds on others whereby we will not receive healing for that we should know that there is no one in this world who is able to heal us except jesus even our father our mother even our parents cannot help us it's only god because even your mother does not know when why how you were born this is word of god this is 2 maccabees chapter 7 22 and 23 we read like this and the mother is telling the son 2 maccabees second letter of maccabees chapter 7 verses 22 and 23 the mother says i do not know how you came into being in my womb it was not I who gave you life and breath, nor I who set in order the elements within each of you. Therefore, the creator of the world who shaped the beginning of humankind and devised the origin of all things will in his mercy give life and breath back to you again, since you now forget yourselves for the sake of his laws. The mother is telling, My son, I don't know how, why, when you came into my womb. It's God who created you. Jeremiah 29 11, therefore we read, I know the plans I have for you. A plan for your welfare, not for destruction. Remember, no human person, no human leader, no dad, no mom, can ever say, I know the plans I have for you, to a child, to a daughter, to a son, because they don't belong to us. They belong to God. They came from God. That's why we do not know why, when, how they are being born. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ourselves, if we check into our life, many of us are so much burdened when we think about our children. But we know we ourselves cannot change our lives. We were also like this once upon a time. I do remember once a mother brought a daughter around 13 years and this mother told like this, Father, I am very ashamed of my daughter. She is totally unchristian. She has many boyfriends. She makes fun of others. She does not believe in God. Whatever I say, she just tells the opposite. And I, I am very much ashamed of her behavior. She backhands her. She is so stubborn. She is so rebellious. I feel so much ashamed and guilty the behavior of my daughter. And I don't know what will happen if she goes like this. I am very angry with her. But she never listens to me. When this mother was complaining, feeling so hurt and wounded, we started to pray for her and the Lord gave this word of God. This is from Titus chapter 3, 2 to 4. St. Paul's letter to Titus 
chapter 3, 2 to 4. The scripture says like this. To speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show every courtesy to everyone. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, despicable, hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us. Not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy. Praise the Lord. So this mother is complaining about her daughter. But the Lord asked her like this through the scripture. How were you when you were 13 years? Whether you were so obedient, so humble, so holy as you expect from your daughter. Whether you were so obedient to your mom. She just kept her head down and she said, Father, I was worse. Then the Lord is telling, this is from two. Therefore, to speak evil of no one. Therefore, you should not speak evil of your daughter. You have to avoid quarreling with her. You have to be gentle. You have to show every courtesy to your daughter. Because... The same Lord Jesus who saved you, who showered his mercy upon you, will also shower that mercy upon your daughter and will convert her. There's a beautiful parable Jesus said. This is the parable of the weeds. This is gospel of Matthew chapter 13 from 31 where the man came and told the master, can we remove all the weeds? Then the master said, no, this is Matthew 13 from 29. He replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. My dear sisters and brothers, when we treat someone as a weed, as someone who is wasting their life, we so rebellious and stubborn. The Lord just wants us to be a little more kind and patient because in our place, in, in, in this country, in this place called Kerala, where I was born, there were certain plants. Our people thought this, they are weeds and we used to remove these weeds. But later on through scientific research they found these so-called weeds are very precious herbal medicines so now they are very precious but there was a time out of ignorance we took these herbal plants as weeds because we did not know something good can come out of this weed we have to know today there are certain people whom we consider as weeds but they are not weeds before God they can be a precious stone chosen by God even we ourselves were once upon considered to be a black sheep. If you are considered like that, don't raise your hand. Hide yourself. But now you are not like that. God has chosen you. The prodigal son was a lost sheep, a black sheep. He was a weed once upon a time. But the Lord's mercy came upon him and the prodigal son became a true son of the heavenly father once again. Saint Paul himself said, this is 1 Timothy 1.13. Formerly I was a blasphemer, a man of violence and a persecutor. But God's mercy poured out upon me and his mercy saved me. I am what I am by the grace of God. Saint Therese of child Jesus, little Therese. Actually, she encountered Christ when she was just 13 years old. But St. Augustine could find God only when he was around 33 years old. There is a great saint called St. Nicholas of Flu. I visited his place in Zurich. This is in Switzerland. He only started to follow God after 60 years old. Imagine... 
If you look at Saint Augustine at the age of 23, you'll just call him a weed, someone who is good for nothing, who is a drunkard, who has no faith, who is a womanizer, who is not worth living on this earth. Because he has short sighted. We don't know Augustine is in the process of becoming a saint. When you see Nicholas at the age of 50, we may just consider him as a weed, but he's not a weed in the sight of God. There's a powerful word of God in the book of prophet Isaiah chapter 65 verse 8. Isaiah 65 verse 8, the word of God says, Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servant's sake and not destroy them all. When the Lord sees the wine, he will see just, not just wine, means not the cluster, not the, the grapes, but the wine in it. There's a blessing. The Lord looks beyond. Clap your hands for God. Praise the Lord. There is hope because we believe in Jesus. The same Lord Jesus who saved you, who changed you, who converted you, who made you to be humble, to be obedient, to be submissive, to be prayerful. Today, as you are so humbly seated at this divine retreat center, the Lord can do the same in your daughter, in your son, if you believe in the saving power of Jesus Christ, he will do the same miracle in their life. Let's never consider anyone as a black sheep or a lost sheep or a weed. God can bring good out of evil. As I read in a book, this is an interpretation of Romans chapter 8 verse 28. Romans 8.28, this is one of the most repeated word of God in our lives. The word of God says, we know that, you can repeat this powerful word of God, please kindly raise your, raise your right hand and repeat after me. We know that, we know that. All, things good, all things work together for good. For those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. According to William Barclay, a Bible scholar, he says like this, all things work together for good for those who love God. He says, all things include evil things. That means everything happens in your life. God has a superpower. This superpower is to bring good out of evil. C, C, C. 412 says, Catechism of the Catholic Church number 412 says like this, God permits evil because God can bring good out of evil. St. Paul writes this scripture saying like this, we know that. We know from our ancestors. We know from our patriarchs. We know from the Old Testament. We know from the life of our great grandparents that we do have a God who has an extraordinary supernatural power. Even if something evil happens in our life, he can bring good out of that evil. As we read in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, this is what Joseph the patriarch said. He was put into the pit by his own brothers. He was betrayed. He was sold as a slave. He was imprisoned. He was falsely accused. He suffered too much. But at the end of the day, Joseph found the powerful hand of God who brought, who turned everything for his good. As we read, even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. In order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. Today, as we listen to the word of God, the Lord just wants to tell us this most important fact that 
our god has a supernatural power to bring good out of evil so what we need to do forgive all those who hurt us accept every suffering as a gift from the hand of god every hurt feeling every wound because god can bring mighty good out of this wound praise the lord of paradise nothing compares to the promise i have in you my jesus my savior lord there is none like you is none like you oh lord All my days i want to praise the wonders of your mighty love Comfort. Your presence is my comfort. Your companionship is my glory. Your paradise is my hope. Never cease to worship. I will never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. At every moment of my life. Even when I am humiliated, even when I am in pain in my body, I will shout praises to you, thanking you. Of your name, I sing for joy at the work of your hands. You are there for me. Forever I love you. Forever I love you forever. Even when I am rejected, to the promise I have. I will love you forever and nothing compares to nothing. the promise nothing I compares you. to the promise I have in you Lord praise you hallelujah. praise you, Lord Jesus thank you praise glory and honor hallelujah and thanksgiving to you O Lord praise we praise, praise you, to you O Lord hallelujah. hallelujah Jesus praise you Together with the angels in heaven, I praise you, O Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, praise you. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, thank you, Lord. This is a moment of glory, and that glory is the glory of love, not the glory of the big people of this earth. not the big thrones and crowns of the earth it's a glory of love a god whose nature is love a god who comes down in love to the manger and then offers himself on the cross god wounded because he loved 
God. I see your glory in this little piece of bread. The glory of love. I see your glory manifested, glowing in this broken body of yours. Broken for me. It is my name on your lips. When your body was torn by scourges. It is my name on your lips. When you were condemned to the most miserable, wretched death on the cross. It is my name on your lips when nails were driven into your palms and feet. My name telling me you shall be with me in paradise. Jesus all that I want is your promise. I do not look for majesty and power, name and fame and money and prestige on this earth. All will vanish. The one glory that will never vanish that will remain forever is the glory of your paradise. The companionship of cordiality and honor that you offered to the good thief. Jesus, give me the grace to learn what to look for, where to find my joy, the meaning and destiny of my life not in making a lot of money, not in being applauded by everyone around. No. Even when I'm misunderstood, even the best of my intentions are misrepresented, I know when to say a word in my favor. When I feel I have a right to be vindicated in justice. Lord, I will remember you. I will remember you on the cross. I will wait to hear your voice. I will turn to you. Remember me when you are in your kingdom. And I will hear your voice today. At that moment of pain, at that moment of the pain of humiliation and rejection, I will hear your voice today. You shall be with me in paradise. Remember me. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Awful fantasies begin to haunt me. Lord, give me the grace to turn to you. When the securities the world offers are denied to me, Lord, 
give me the grace to turn to you when my body writhes in pain when the future looks dark and bleak lord give me the grace to turn to you and find my hope and comfort in you remember me jesus remember me when you come in of today you never postpone your graces you are a love of today you are a paradise of today lord that's my hope when i commit my life to you that's my hope when i hand over my future to you you will never fail me you are unfailing love lord anoint me with your spirit your holy spirit to fill me and lead me you promised you would never leave me alone and you fulfilled the promise by giving me your spirit to dwell in my heart by making me a temple of your spirit lord give me your grace to turn to the holy spirit and wait to hear the whisper of the holy spirit your spirit leading me to you like the good thief reme always turn to you never turn away from you o oh god never always to turn to you praying remember me when you are in your kingdom jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom jesus remember spirit of comfort you are the spirit of truth you are the spirit of love you holy spirit you are the spirit of freedom and forgiveness let me never languish in despair and hatred holy spirit anoint me afresh me 
holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine, be every Good.